Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to this Global Love Day celebration. Thank you so much for being here. It is May 1st. We are live streaming on Facebook as well. A wonderful conversation happening here and people joining. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alexis, Attila, Tam. I am recording. Arunya, I hope I'm saying that right. I had shared earlier, Attila, he gives a lot of love. So I'm gonna say it again, wherever this video ends up. He's got a wonderful YouTube channel called Zan85, Zan85. He does these daily tarot and horoscope readings that I absolutely love. And I share them on my Instagram stories as well. Frank just woke up in Germany. Hi, Frank, thank you for being here. And everyone who's here to celebrate Global Love Day with me. So how is it, where is it that you are trying to bring more love right where you are? Um, because it does feel especially important uh, at this time. Hi, Tracy. Thank you for being here as well. Susie always brings the love. Rose, thank you, everybody. Um, I do think, for me anyways, having to go out a couple times a week to do groceries and things like that. And I do go out as well, of course, to walk my dog, Biggie, who's sleeping right now. But having to engage the world, it does mean that I, um, I'm just trying to acknowledge people more. I'm trying to look at people and in the eye and especially in the grocery stores, try to thank people for their work. I live in Mexico, so it is a little bit different than if you're living in some other places like in Canada, um, where here it is the case that if you don't work, there is, you know, there's, there isn't the kind of social nets that we see in places like Canada, for example. Um, and so people, they seem really grateful to have the opportunity to work, but I still thank them. I can tell that that's a little bit of a foreign concept in the way that you see in, uh, in other places. But um, the idea that I would be grateful for that when they are doing something that um, that a lot of people aren't getting the opportunity to do to make sure that they're okay to take care of their families. Um, but still, I feel like it is important to acknowledge that, to say thank you to them. So that's what I try to do to spread love, um, is to be loving and to express my gratitude to these people. Um, <laughs> We've got wonderful, yes, Attila Biggie is very well, thank you. He's doing really good uh, right now. And sending love to all of you guys also. So that's one way, right now, we have had wildfires here in Cancun and it was a little scary last night, but then it started to rain this morning. I had asked for prayers and uh, wow, people really came through because it started raining shortly after that. <laughs> and that was quite amazing. And my hope is that as much as love is what we share with other people, I have such a love and dedication to this land, my adopted home of over seven years. And I, I feel such a, a deep, deep abiding gratitude um, for being here. And um, it has meant so much to me to feel the love of other people for this place. And especially at a time like this, when we are having many wildfires in my state in particular. So please do, if you are so inspired as part of your meditations, your prayers, or as part of a moment that you may have to send love and calm and cool and healing to this place, because your prayers and your energy is working. It absolutely works. And um, it was such a relief when it started to rain in the morning after this you know, very thick and heavy smoke uh, that was filling the city overnight. Um, that was scaring a lot of people, as you can imagine. Um, several places in the state uh, have had wildfires. The closest one was about 20, 25 minutes away from me. Uh, just outside of Cancun in, the, in a little town right over called Puerto Morelos. So you can imagine that um, 
it is moments like this that bring us the awareness of the love that we feel for the, the places that we are. I mean, I feel that for the local people, certainly, and I felt that definitely as well. That, uh, that gratitude for being here is never ending. And it's amazing because just a couple days ago, I was thinking about how like, I really feel in some ways like the life that I had and the life that began when I moved here, it is, um, it's like night and day. It is, it's like I really started living. I was really able to be me really able to step into an engaged life, to move forward um, in so many other ways that, that I feel I've been blessed since moving here. It really did change my energy and it changed me in so many ways and continues to. So yes, there's a lot of love for this land that I feel. So I appreciate your positive energy. Attila said, we're doing a mass meditation on the 7th. Thank you so much for, for including Cancun in that. Maggie here from Australia. And yes, uh, I can imagine that in Australia, you guys understand. And so you have that moment of fear, you know, because I, I saw the world witnessed um, what has happened in Australia and especially to the natural world. And here so many indigenous communities uh, living in villages and small towns and knowing that they would be disproportionately affected by all this and the natural world being affected by all this. So, um, and then you have to sort of remove the fear for a moment, right? Just step away, try to ease the grip of the fear and focus on the love because that way the love can have a chance to be more powerful than the fear because fear is, is, is strong. It's also a force in the world that shapes the world along with love. And, um, and I think though, whenever we choose love as hard as it can be sometimes because of the pull of fear, then things get better. We, we are able to acknowledge and see things get better in front of us. And, and that's a power. That is a great power. Susie is offering free yoga online to her community and colleagues at the Royal Danish Theater. That's how I celebrate love and community. That's beautiful. Rose said, I've been trying to be more patient, have more kindness for everyone, but especially for myself. I haven't been so good with self-love. I'm so glad you said that because I do think that love and kindness focused on us as well, is so important. Consider this, right now we are entering May, and I've been talking about this a little bit, right? A little bit. If the monthly horoscopes are out now for uh, superstars, they always get early access, uh, and they will be published publicly on my YouTube channel um, a little bit later today. And in pretty much all the videos I say, make sure you watch the Venus retrograde special horoscope video. I try to bring people to that again and again. And that's because I feel like this Venus retrograde season that we're in, and especially in the month of May is going to be such an important energy with Venus essentially holding a conversation with Neptune all month. This can be an energy of uncertainty of of shifts in our own thought patterns and moods that we have to be mindful of. And as much as the energy of Gemini, where this Venus retrograde season is taking place in, it is about engaging others, right? It's about conversation, communication, exchanges, spontaneous. As much as it is about that, it's also about our own thought patterns. And I do think that this connection with Neptune is inviting us in some ways to look at how we think. You know, there's a lot of different ways to change your life. There are a lot of different ways to improve your life. And one way is observation. How are you uh, thinking about things? What thoughts, what words, what phrases are you holding in your mind? And to diligently work to change them. Um, whether you want to change them with mantras or your perceptions. So for example, 
I know right now there is for a lot of people out there, and I want to honor and acknowledge it, that there is financial insecurity for a lot of people. I uh, mentioned earlier that in Mexico, they don't have the type of social safety nets that we have, for example, in Canada. But um, even with that, and without having that necessarily, there are ways in which if you are feeling financial insecurity, to be able to still acknowledge the places of your life that are abundant. And I know that that can be difficult, especially when there is that lesson very much on the surface of survival, right? That's part of what I think the, the financial part of it kicks up for us is the lesson of survival. But that will still be there. And when it is that we have those moments of uncertainty, when we feel that fear, to be able to observe it and say, okay, when I have that fear, I am going to know it's there. As Eckhart Tolle said, you don't have to worry about your bills. You have to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about them. And to be able to shift focus just, even if you can only do it a little bit, to acknowledge where there is abundance in your life. It is incredible how much work that can actually be. And it isn't just with finances. I mean, you can think about it in so many different ways. When you find yourself being hard on yourself, when you find yourself not speaking to yourself lovingly, if you can gently shift that focus and just say, okay, let me acknowledge where it is that there is beauty and love and wisdom and, and positivity in my life. It is truly incredible how hard it is in the beginning but how quickly it can become a habit. And I think that is really when power starts to happen. And so with planets retrograde in general, it gives us an opportunity to reflect more deeply, to look at ourselves more deeply. And with Venus retrograde in Gemini, it truly allows us to embody and embrace love on a level of mind and conversation and thought. But more importantly, with the connection with Neptune, where it is that we need more diligence in that work, where it is that we're allowing ourselves to get carried away, um, where it isn't as empowered, where it isn't as loving, um, I think that can show up over the course of this month of May as well. Happy birthday, Aria. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Happy birthday. We had someone else with a birthday here as well. Arife. I hope I'm saying that right. It's a beautiful name. Thank you, Susie. I'm glad that uh, the Venus specials are meaningful to you. Philip is here from the Love Foundation um and supporting global love day event thank you for seeing me as part of your vision thank you for that and attila said venus square neptune also bears the danger of fraud over the internet we have to be careful these couple of weeks i completely agree with you in the monthly horoscopes there are certain signs out there that have to be careful of catfishing i'm sorry to say that um but that is um, something that I do mention in the monthly horoscopes, like, look, be careful of catfishing. That is one way that this energy absolutely can show up. And Attila said, fear is like the inner Medusa. We need to become the Perseus and find a way to slay it and release our Pegasus hope. Yes. Medusa is very interesting. There's been a lot of um, recent exploration of the myth of Medusa and uh, all the different things that she represents. It's a very powerful myth uh, to look at more deeply as well. But yes, and I think also authentic hope, right? And not, um, I'm reminded of, and I think maybe I can uh, come back to the full screen in some way. Let me stop share so you can see me in your full screen, perhaps. Let's see here, there we go. Can you see me? Hi. So um, there was, I was watching a little uh, documentary and it was about 
these women who, uh, and it was mostly women, who find themselves being catfished. And it was from the perspective of the people doing the catfishing. So the people who put a picture of someone who's not them up online and they start having conversations with women and they're hoping to get money sent to them and things like that. And you're watching them do this. And it's so obvious, like it's such an obvious thing that this person is not who they are saying they are. Uh, the accent is so different than the story they're telling you about where they're from. Um, and the person who's doing the catfishing is not coming on video, but they're having phone conversations and they're, you know, affirming and they're listening and they're encouraging. And so it ends up being the case that these women, mostly again, not exclusively, of course, but in this example, they do send money. And I was thinking that there is some need being filled there. You know, like it's, it's not as simple as being conned. There's some deeper need for companionship, for connection that is being met because it's almost safer, if you will. That, that was my impression, was that it's, it's almost a little bit safer to say, okay, I'm not seeing you on video. I know you're probably not who you say you are, but you're getting something out of the interaction. And so even if it isn't necessarily the easiest thing to come up with, if they need $1,000 or $2,000, even if it isn't necessarily the easiest thing, um, there's an exchange happening there that is filling a deeper need. And so that requires self-honesty to look at that more deeply, to reflect on oneself more deeply. At the same time, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying that anybody deserves to be with somebody not completely honest, of course not. But I, I think that we may need to be mindful of this and, and to pay attention. I'm very encouraged by the new moon that is happening this month. Uh, in the sign of Gemini as well. Now, this new moon will be trine Saturn. And I think that this is going to be that window of practicality, like that glimpse of stability, where we have this Gemini energy that otherwise is so uh, murky, if you will, right? There's so much happening um, that isn't clear, thanks to Venus and Neptune, Venus squaring Neptune, rather. That new moon has. Um, a long-term and a practical and a grounded part of it that allows us to understand, on the one hand, to make solid choices, but to see through illusion. Saturn, it's almost the antidote to Neptune. And that Saturn trying to that new moon allows us to see through the illusion of, um, of what Venus square Neptune can be, which can be very immersive, a very immersive energy. But I'm encouraged by the retrograde because the universe is wise and loving, as I like to say. And so the retrograde happening now, I do feel with the Venus retrograde happening now, it does allow us to get more honest about what love is to us, self-love, love for others, the overriding question with Venus is always, do I love it? Do I love him, her, them, this situation, this work, this place, all of it? And especially given where Venus is retrograde in your chart, that becomes the overriding question. But that requires reflection. That requires self-honesty. And sometimes we're gathering experiences that allow us to understand more deeply, is there love here or not? With that new moon in Gemini happening around the 22nd of the month, trining Saturn, it's a break from the quest, from the illusion, and getting more to the core, getting more right to the, right to the practicality of the matter. It's one thing to say... And it's one thing to profess love. It's another thing to actually live it. It's another thing for it to show up. You know, as, um, as Maya Angelou very famously said, when people show you who they are, believe them. And I think that Saturn is about the showing, right? With 
Neptune squaring Venus and Gemini. It's, it's the words, it's the promises, it's the hope, it's the fantasy, it's the illusion, it's the heightened expectation. And then you have this, okay, how are things actually, what am I actually seeing? And finding strength in that, I think is part of the blessing of that new moon, seeing things accurately and clearly through our hopes. And that can actually make love stronger because as much as love requires hope, right? Love requires forgiveness. I was thinking about uh, the other day, a few months back, I did one of the weekly videos and I spoke about, and I think it was the last time that Venus squared Neptune, but I spoke about how in uh, uh, one union understanding of love, it comes from a book called Eros and Pathos, Shades of Love and Suffering. It's written by a union analyst uh, with this beautiful Italian name that I can't remember right now. But in this book, he says that love and loss are intimately entwined. You cannot know one without the other. And I was kind of thinking about this and meditating on it, and especially in relationship, of course, to dogs, because I have Biggie, who I love so very much, but especially in relation to that, because I feel like my heart expanded. It has opened in a way that I just never knew before um, Biggie came into my life two years ago. Almost to the day, like two years and two weeks, 10 days, 11 days ago, is when uh, Biggie came into my life. And it's like, whew, my heart just opened wide. And I feel it, you know? And I think a part of the spiritual lesson that dogs bring into our lives is the awareness that to love is to be intimately aware of loss and the possibility and the probability of loss. It makes us appreciate love more. It is meant to make us love more deeply and fiercely um, by being aware of this. And that may be part of the lesson for some people with Venus squaring Neptune. But I think that um, the new moon, trine Saturn, I think that is really going to be a wonderful grounding. And remember, Saturn is also immortal. Saturn speaks to our bones and our bones are the part of the body that lasts longer, has the greatest potential for being here millions of years after uh, we have departed this incarnation. And so Saturn in many ways does represent that which lasts. And I think that that beautiful new moon trying Saturn is going to give us a glimpse into that. Susan said, Biggie is famous now. I hope so. Goodness, in the beginning, when I first got Biggie, I tried my darndest to have photos of him go viral. I was sending them to different Instagram accounts that feature um, dogs and especially dogs like him, Staffords and pit bulls and things, but there were no takers and that's okay. He's famous to me and I'm grateful that he's uh, famous to you guys. I'm doing a lot of home redesign, renovating and things like that. I don't normally share. I'm going to wait and I'll put something on Instagram. My kitchen right now has been more of the focus, but I am going to be changing my studio space in some way, creating a couple of different studio spaces. So one space is going to be this. Uh, art is already on the way. This is going to change in the back. And um, I want to have another studio space where you can see Biggie in the background. Um, two weeks ago, my neighbor decided to have a very noisy party. And um, I couldn't work in this space because it was almost like the party was right here. I don't think outsiders came in, so it's okay. That's what they needed to do. It was fine. But I ended up having to work in the bedroom. And I'd never done that before. I'd never recorded any videos in the bedroom. Now, this was for the superstar horoscopes. So I did a bunch of them in the bedroom because it was quiet in there. And Biggie was there as well. And he would get up and walk around me and kind of, you know, lie down on my lap. And then you'd see his head come up. And I loved it. I just loved it. I felt like, you know, I feel like he's such a blessing in my life. So I loved that he was showing up so much on camera. 
and I um, want to have a studio space where you can see Biggie uh, kind of wandering around. Attila said Biggie has oceans of love in his eyes. Thank you so much, Susan. Susan just celebrated a milestone birthday. Susan is a incredible psychic. I'll tell you, I had a reading with her, I think it was about a year or two ago that I had a reading with Susan and, um, you know, just contacted her directly. She has a website, um, Susan Nicole Wright, she's here in the comments. And it was so powerful to me, such a beautiful, beautiful reading. It spoke to the heart of me. Um, and so thank you for that, Susan. I really appreciated uh, my reading with you. It stays with me. You know, that's part of the blessing of, I think, what we do is that all communication is infinite. That's part of what I do love about what I do is that somebody could, you know, read one of my books. I was talking about prayers earlier, prayers to the sky, the body and the cosmos. So you can read one of my books and it's like, okay, great. Yay. I read that. And then 20 years later, you'll remember something that you read in this book and it makes all the difference. Somebody could watch one of my videos and then 10 years later, remember something I said, and it makes all the difference. And I love that. I love that I get to be part of the more empowering part of someone's subconscious. And hopefully that ends up being something that encourages them forward, that helps them at some point immediately or otherwise. Peter is here. Peter uh, gives a lot of love on Twitter. He's always uh, doing that follow Friday thing. I'm not so active on Twitter, but he has remembered me repeatedly again and again for years. So thank you so much, Peter, for constantly sharing me with uh, your followers and your audience. Thank you for that. Thank you, Alexis, and all the love that people are sharing. Tam said, can you tell us when your, your new book comes out and when we can pre-order? I'm so excited to read it. Thank you. So right now, the advanced copies are uh, going on. I'm currently trying to figure out what to do because I um, had planned, this book is done, The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon. Um, I'm finalizing the cover now. As you know, the previous artist who was my friend that I used to work with who did the previous covers of my books and he did this cover as well he passed away and uh, we were in the midst of of doing something but that's okay his work is always with me his blessings his love is always with me uh, and another incredible artist um, that I met actually when I was in Asia in 2017, and she was a tourist in Cambodia, her name is Nikki Gonzalez, incredibly talented artist. Um, she had one of her arts on her Instagram, and I said, that's the cover right there. That's going to be the cover. And so she is uh, working on that and getting that together. The thing is, I, um, and I have been in touch with my printer as well. He said that, you know, we're good to go whenever you are. So that's great. I'm really glad that, that he's able to continue to work. But um, there are no direct flights from Cancun to Canada at this moment. They start June 1st. That It has been made very clear that the direct flights start June 1st. And I ship these from Canada because I have to sign them on the one hand. But also it... Um, you know, it's the only way it really makes sense considering most books sell within uh, Canada and the US. So when you get the advanced copy, you are getting my signature and you are knowing that I actually physically held this. Um, and I actually, my dad does help me, which is really nice of him, put together the envelopes and the packages. Um, but yes, so that printing can happen anytime, but I am planning to go home on June 1st where I can immediately sign and ship the books. So there is going to be a little bit of a delay in terms of the ad advanced copies. As far as the pre-order from Amazon, uh, that will come after advanced copies have shipped. So once that happens, then pre-orders on Amazon can open up and I have to figure out what gift I like to give for the pre-orders. But this is a book that's been a long time coming, a long time coming. And because now of what's going on, I've got this little bit of extra time before the printer needs to get it so that I get it in time to ship it. 
Um, I'm thinking about adding a special uh, preface to the advanced copy book. So we'll see about that if I'm so inspired. But yes, this is very exciting. The universe is wise and loving. So yes, be on the lookout for that. Officially, it launches on Amazon August 22nd. I've already started working on the next book. So there you go. But I'll just show you guys quickly here. I don't know how much you can see. And you can see that. So that's how it is right now. And I actually have added, before I got this draft copy done, there was actually something else. So the draft, this here says, I hope you guys can see it clearly, but it's basically introduction and then nodes to the signs and houses, then nodes and aspects to the different planets and Chiron. But I actually um, did write a, a whole introduction about why I say the universe is wise and loving. So that ends up being like very much from the heart, my passion, almost like a, a little bit of a mini spiritual manifesto, if you will, as to how and why I believe that the universe is wise and loving. And then I go on to talk about the connection of the nodes as an expression of a wise and loving universe or your unique journey towards greater love and greater wisdom, as I like to call it. Susie said, Biggie is the physical manifestation of a universe wise and loving. Thank you. He really is. You know, he really is. But thank you for asking about the book. It will be uh, available for pre-order at some point. I will let you guys know. But it's still uh, available for advanced copy sale. And it comes with over $200 worth of gifts if you are so inspired. And a signed copy from me. Susan, thank you for your love and support of my books. Attila said, your work definitely changed my life. Um, thank you. Attila gives so much love online and his YouTube channel, Zan85, puts a lot of love into the world as well. So it's Global Love Day. I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you to everybody who's here live, who checked in. I will uh, likely post this on Facebook. The people on, sorry, I will likely post a part of this on YouTube, but Facebook is getting, you know, the first take. So if you were here at the beginning, or if you decide to go back and watch, you know that I hadn't started recording. And then I was like, oh dear, I'm not recording. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's start this again. And so if you're on Facebook, you get to see uh, me talking at the beginning, which is part of the fun. Thank you, Tam, for the love that you bring. I appreciate it. So the advanced copies are available at my website, either nadiashaw.com or theuniverseiswiseandloving.com takes you directly there. And then the pre-order on Amazon will be available later this summer, uh, likely starting at some point in June. So that'll be the pre-order through Amazon anyways. And with Amazon, once the book publishes on August 22nd, it is available as a hard copy and an ebook, but they only allow ebooks as advanced uh, pre-orders, not advanced copy, pre-order copies when you buy it through Amazon directly through them. Yay, Tam is at the Love Foundation too. Woohoo, thank you. Well, thank you for seeing me as part of your vision. I'm so grateful for that. And what a perfect time to be talking about love and something like a global love day, something so important, such a wonderful reminder. How important is that right now, considering um, Venus right now? Slowing down, right? starting to slow down to a standstill, being so especially close to the earth. I think that love is something that a lot of us are going to be considering and contemplating. And there is a yearning for love that I think is arising in people. And that is going to be felt especially strong in the month of May with um, Venus squaring Neptune. So how we embrace that, I think, is part of the, the great opportunity of this time. Thank you, Anna, for being here. Thank you, Frida. Thank you, everybody, for joining me live for Global Love Day, for more on uh, Venus uh, retrograde season. And of course, I'll keep talking about it, right? I will keep talking about this wonderful um, Venus retrograde and all the things that are happening in the sky. I have been here and I am going to be here. And it's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all the love and the hearts that I saw going up while I was doing this. That was a really beautiful thing. 
and I appreciate you guys. Okay, big hugs, everybody. Enjoy your Global Love Day, however it is that you choose to acknowledge it. And my very, very humble request, please continue to send your healing and cooling and beautiful energy to the earth right now. Um, and if you are so inspired to think of the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico, where there are wildfires happening, because it seems to be working. So I ask because it's working. Um, and you guys are magic. You guys are powerful. Your prayers, your love, it means so much. And it actually is a force of healing in the world right now. And, um, and thank you for that. Thank you for the love that you bring. Atella said Venus is on overtime. She absolutely is. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mary Kate. Thank you, Rosemary Rose. Everybody who's here, have a wonderful Global Love Day, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. I appreciate you guys so much. Okay, thank you. Bye.